Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Rada Lessons. Welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really hope you're doing well. And in today's episode, I wanna give a comparison between the 2019 Light Blue Flanker by Dolce & Gabbana and of course the new 2020 Flanker, which is called Love is Love. So make sure to stay tuned. So as I'm sure you know, Dolce & Gabbana came out with Light Blue back in 2007. And since then, they have come out with so many flankers. Some of them did really well. I think they really resonated with a lot of people. Some of them crashed and burned, unfortunately. And what I've seen here is that some of them are actually quite good in the sense that people are stocking up or people realize that it's a limited edition as is specified on the back of the boxes. And so they wanna make sure that they purchase enough so that in future years when this fragrance isn't available anymore, at least they have that comfort of knowing that, oh, okay, I still have like two backup bottles, I'll wear them sparingly, and this is something that'll last me for a significant amount of time to come. And uh, as I'm sure you can see here, if you're looking at my 2019 bottle, I've actually put a little bit of a dent in it, uh, which is a lot actually, considering how many fragrances I have and all the ones that I wear for testing and stuff like that. I haven't decanted any of it. This is actually the amount of liquid that I've worn. And then of course this one, I put only a teeny tiny dent in it because this one is brand new. I, it arrived maybe like two weeks ago or something like that. So I know I had done a video of the 2020 version which is called Light Blue Love is Love. If you're interested in watching that video, I'm gonna leave a link for it down below. But today what I would like to do is I would like to compare the two versions because when I did my top 10 of 2019, I think I did a video of that nature, I mentioned that this one was actually one of my favorites and I really enjoyed it as a release from Dolce & I know recently they also came out with K. Uh, it didn't really resonate with me. It just smelled a little bit too plain for my taste. But this one kind of takes the original DNA and it puts a summery twist on it. So it has this slightly floral appeal in an exotic way, of course, kind of reminding me of suntan lotion, a little bit like coconut. It's a little bit creamy. It's almost like the type of fragrance that you would wear in the summer. You know, it's a hot summer day. Maybe you're going to the beach and you really want to put yourself in that mindset. I think this one is so successful in doing that and sort of evoking that vibe. Now, when you take a look at the 2020 version, I think there's a lot to be said about this one as well. For the 2020 version, a lot of people online, and I would wholeheartedly agree with them, a lot of people have actually been comparing it to Light Blue Intense for her. And that's a fragrance that, of course, I've smelled. I don't think I own that one, but my wife has owned several bottles of the original. And if you are a fan of either the original or the Intense version for women, you would know that one of the discerning notes is the note of apple. So you smell it, it has this bright green apple note in the opening, and that's something that they've included in this one as well. So what happens when you take that light blue DNA and you tinker around with it by including some elements that are found in the woman's counterpart, inevitably, you're gonna leave people to draw a comparison between the two. And I do think that it actually smells a little bit similar to light blue intense for her. However, I do think it stands on its own two legs in the sense that it's a very pleasant smell. It actually has some really tart citrus notes in the opening that I don't know if I would use the word masculinize the composition, but it would create a deviation from the woman's counterpart. So you have like this really tart grapefruit which is also found in the original from 2007. Now, what are the significant differences between these two? If we're talking about fruity nuances, um, you know, I haven't visited the note breakdown for this one, so I'm just sort of speaking off the top of my head. But if we were to discuss like a fruity nuance between the two, both have grapefruit. I think they both open up equally sharp. Maybe uh, this one opens up a little bit more sharp than Love is Love. But this one is more coconut driven. This one is more apple driven. Now, I don't think it ever smells 100% like coconut and I don't think it ever smells 100% like apple. There are a lot of fragrances out there if you're looking for um, like the solid floor equivalent of like a fruity note, uh, maybe Virgin Island Water has a lot of coconut, right? So you smell it and you're like, wow, yeah, this is definitely coconut that I'm smelling. Or even this one discontinued fragrance called G by Harajuku Lovers, uh, which was the Gwen Stefani line. Now, when you take a look at this one, um, you are gonna smell apple, but I think apple is done in a more organic way in a lot of fragrances. One of them, believe it or not, is called Signature by Avon. And I, I think it has a really bright, fresh, fruity apple note in there. So 
it has these fruity notes, but they're blended equally well with all of these other notes that sort of surround them. And you have that brightness in the opening because of the citrus, but then in the base, you have two very different compositions. Here in the base, it's more musky. So I think it lends itself to a stronger comparison with the original. This one, they said, let's increase the vanilla. And so if you know anything about the, you know, no pyramid for this one, you know that it contains this vanilla gelato accord, which in in my opinion it's obviously it's not it's more than an opinion it's a fact it's a fantasy accord so there's this apple note in the opening there's vanilla in the base and they said let's create this fantasy accord that'll really draw in consumers and i think they're doing a good job right i, I think a lot of times when we read these notes it just captivates us right these fantasy notes or fantasy accords it makes it a little bit more interesting to us right like oh yeah i really should check this one out that sounds interesting it has a vanilla ice cream note to it now this one on the other hand i think the sun name or designation does a fantastic job of uh, sort of evoking uh the types of seasons to wear this in. You know, it's definitely a very bright and sunny fragrance. And uh, it certainly reminds me of something that I would put on in the sun, which is sunblock, right? Or suntan lotion, because of that sort of tropical, creamy, slightly fruity, exotic coconut vibe that it gives off. Now, this one being a limited edition as well, I think something that we've been saying for the longest time is even with the original light blue or light blue intense or any of the other flankers, I know one of them is Italian Zest. I didn't like that one too much. Um, but people say these are fragrances to be worn in the summertime. Just because the light blue fragrance on its own, I think is a really solid summertime fragrance. Now, both of these are good for summer. Which one do I think is better for summer? I think if there's a fragrance that'll put you more in the mindset of summer, it's definitely light blue sun. When I spray it on, I'm like, wow, this smells like summertime. And I tried to sort of separate myself from my memories because obviously I've worn this last year and a part of me can't help but like think of uh, summer of 2019 whenever I wear it. However, I think in terms of the overall construction and the notes that are in it, this one is definitely more evocative of the summertime despite what my personal memories might be. This one, on the other hand, smells like an overall well put together fragrance. Unfortunately, that really nice sort of bright, fresh, fruity introduction lasts like half an hour and then it goes away, which was a bit of a letdown for me personally. But if I were to compare the two in terms of its summertime appeal, this one is more evocative for summer, but both of them can be worn equally as comfortably in the summer. And I think this is something that Dolce & Gabbana had been intending all along. Now, my personal preference, if I really had to narrow it down, my personal preference as one that I see myself wearing on a more regular basis is this one. Because despite the fact that I think they're both uh, to be worn in the summer optimally, this is one that I can see myself wearing in the fall or in the winter. If I'm in a climate controlled environment and you know I'm gonna be around a lot of other people, it's a close encounter environment, people are gonna be smelling me, they both have an equally mass appealing formula to them. Uh, but this one on the other hand is the one that I think is more suitable for year round wear as long as you're wearing it indoors in a climate controlled environment. This one on the other hand, I just can't help but get over the fact that every time I spray it on, I think of the summertime. Now, in terms of making a purchase, if you had, obviously I purchased both of them um, and I always have a tendency of purchasing new releases right when they come out. But as a consumer, if you're looking to purchase just one at the moment, I would say your money is better spent on the Sun version. And this is on account of a few different variables. One, it's a limited edition fragrance. I don't know if you wanna buy it for yourself so you can actually wear it, or because you know these discontinuations happen on an annual basis, so you wanna turn a profit five, 10 years in the future. Maybe your money is better spent on light blue sun, right? It's available at discounters. It's significantly more cheap than the new version, which I bought at full retail from Macy's. So just a few things to consider. But if you're saying, you know what? I don't care about the fact that it's limited edition. I just want something right now, something that I can wear despite the season, despite the occasion. 
I think your money is better spent on Love is Love. I find that this one is a bit more versatile and a bit easier to wear too, you know, and not necessarily evocative of the summertime. Now, which one do I like more, right? So if we're discussing on a personal level, which one do I like the smell of more? Um, it's really difficult to say. I would have to say I like the smell of Love is Love more, but the smell that I love lasts 30 minutes and that's it. Now, I really enjoy this smell, not as much as Love is Love, but I actually like the smell of this all the way through the fragrance, right? So um, maybe four, five, six hours into the longevity of the fragrance. So that's why it's a little bit difficult for me to discern which one I like more. If you sprayed it freshly on a test trip, I would say Love is Love, better aroma. You know, if I was just going, if I were going off first impressions, I would pick Love is Love. Um, but in terms of the overall smell well into the dry down, I would say Sun is the one that captivates me a little bit more. So ultimately, you guys know that the lesson to be taken away from this video is that smell is subjective. You need to go out there, try it for yourself, Put your own nose on it. I know especially in the case of this one, being as though it is a brand new release, a lot of people have difficulty sourcing a sample. I'm almost certain that if you go on one of these Facebook groups, you'll find somebody who's splitting it, perhaps somebody even purchased it and is decanting it on ebay.com or one of these other auction websites. So if you look hard enough, you're gonna find somebody who has a sample of it available or at least a decant of it available that you can buy for a very, very, very cheap price. Um, and so I, you know me, I don't necessarily recommend blind buys, um, but again, from a collector standpoint, whenever they do come out, with the summer flanker, I always sort of make it a point or I try to make it a point to purchase it. And I think that we see that that's the case with some of the more recent iterations. I try to buy it as soon as it comes out, not only to review it for my loyal subscribers, but also to have it in my collection for reference purposes. And who knows, maybe down the line, it'll be worth a lot of money. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you took something of value from this video. I mean, I, I wanted to do this video when I smelled this one because I know flanker after flanker after flanker after flanker, inevitably there is gonna be some consumer confusion. And so a lot of times people are scratching their heads and wondering, is this one worth purchasing? I have this version, do I need that version? I have the 2019 version of Sedley, do I need the 2020 version? I have uh, the original Gucci Guilty, do I need the Eau de Parfum version? So I think there are a lot of questions to be asked. And so whenever I can do something to sort of satisfy those question, uh, questions or uh, satiate the appetite for, uh, you know, wanting to know what the answer is. You know, I try to put myself in front of the camera and provide the service to you, ladies and gents. But thank you again so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope this video finds you well. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. Uh, again, if you did take something of value from this video, please consider subscribing. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking for a donation or anything like that. Just click the red button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And of course that includes comparison videos, just like this, fragrance reviews, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. See you next time.